Hey guys, welcome back to the show. And today I actually am doing something super special. I have my 20 year old child here with me that tomorrow will be 21. So Carol, thank you for having this conversation with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yay, we've actually been wanting to do this and just haven't done it. And we just sat down and recorded about 18 minutes of a 30 minute podcast where I was all over the place and could not keep it in a real format. So here's how we're doing this for you guys today. We are sitting at a big conference table with a 2000 piece puzzle in front of us and we're just gonna have a conversation. So Kara, what does it feel like coming up on your 21st birthday, a big milestone birthday for you? Yeah, um, it feels good. It's exciting for, you know, obvious reasons, just getting to that next milestone. And there aren't really a whole lot more coming up except for maybe uh, not being on my parents' insurance in a couple years. What do you mean there's not a whole lot more coming up? Oh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're 16 and then you're 18 and you're an adult and then you're 21 and then you're 25 and you're not on your parents' insurance. But then there's your 30. I will actually be 40 in December. So I have a milestone birthday coming up this year also. So we're hitting these together. Yeah. Um, what, this is something that I had asked you earlier. I want to ask you, what would you as a soon to be in less than 20, well, about 24 hours, uh, what advice would you give to the younger generation, if there's someone out there listening and they're in high school or they're about to graduate, what advice do you give to the younger crowd? Um, I would say it's, it's always good to have dreams, like to have an aspiration, even if that's not where you end up, it's good to just have some kind of motivator. Uh, It's good to remember that the, the bad things that seem like they take up all of the space in your world right now will pass. I know that's really, really hard to believe because I think we've probably all heard it from a parent or a friend or a cousin or an uncle or whatever when we were teenagers or when we were young. And it just doesn't feel that way. But you really, you will get through it. Um, it won't last forever. And, and you're going to be okay. You know, just keep pushing. You are going to be okay. Um, what advice would you give to older generations my own included but those above me as well about how people are looking at you guys today what are what are you because I was thinking you were a millennial millennial but you're not a millennial I'm an elder millennial you're I'm Gen Z you're Gen Z so what do you say well I think that a lot of the negativity surrounding Gen Z from older generations is based in change. Just things that are changing that, you know, older generations aren't necessarily happy with. Mm -hmm. Um, And you know what? (laughs) I think I could probably give the same advice. That, like, this might seem like it's the biggest deal in the world, but since the dawn of mankind, since the beginning of everything, things have just changed. And it might have taken a long time and it might seem like it's coming a lot faster now, but that's because we're part of it, baby. You know, we just gotta we gotta roll with it. Just gotta roll. And I think it might feel like a bit of a spit in the face to older generations sometimes, and I think that's why. Not it a can slap, be... but a spit. <laughs> yeah, a spit in the face. I didn't even realize that. Go ahead, um, keep going. Anyways, I, I think that might be why it can be taken so harshly when things do change, because it uh, just kind of goes back on how how other people were taught or how they taught their kids and then to see that flipped on them yeah can sting a little bit Mm -hmm. but I think it's not necessarily that it's a good or bad thing but it's just something that's gonna happen um Mm -hmm. and there's not really anything to be done about that so there's no point in really getting yourself worked up over it you're right um so and this is crazy because actually I got to tell you guys, on the way to the location that we're currently at, we were riding on the road and we were listening to country music, and she was even telling me that she's now at that point where she feels like, yep, country music all kind of sounds the same now, and doing this conversation, it's making me think about how, you know, older generations, like those even before me, Mm -hmm. hated the country music 
that I listened to, you know, through my 20s. Because Even that's not... direction? That, <laughs> that's not country music anymore. That's not the good stuff. But think, if you loved 90s country, it didn't exactly sound like the 80s Hank Williams Jr., right? But Hank Williams Jr. Sound, sounded absolutely nothing like Hank Williams Sr. So no, no country music has ever been the same the whole time. And it's like that with all music, with all styles. Which with styles, though, man, those are coming back. You guys are rocking what I was wearing back in high school these days. Um, to go back for a second to when I asked if you had any advice for the younger generation, mm-hmm. let me say I have some advice for the parents of the people that are a little bit younger than you, which actually... Their parents might be my same age because I I started very, very young and quit right away on having children. <laughs> <laughs> I have got that one out of the way. One and done. But uh, you guys, as they're going through these high school years, don't be so hard on them when it comes to being good at sports, being the best academically doing all the things all of the time I was that way and I guess it did work out for me but part of mine and care's conversation also is the fact that I didn't even realize beyond any pressure that I purposely put on her to kind of help her to or you know to push her to do well in school she was putting a ton of of pressure on herself because of that. And so once she graduated, it was so crazy to her how much freedom all of a sudden then she had. Because honestly, when I was being raised, and I think I've told you this before, I was asked two questions all the time. And these two questions never would have occurred to me to ask you. And I don't know if this was a thing about my generation when we were young or if it was just my family in particular. But I was asked all the time, one, are you going to graduate high school? And that's not even like, I would ask like, what college are you going to go to? What do you want to be when you grow up? Those types of things. But we were just asked, are you going to graduate? Because so many people, especially my family and around the people that we were around, just dropped out. And then on top of that, I was always asked, are you going to smoke cigarettes? <laughs> Why were these <laughs> the questions that I was asked? So I was raised in a completely different way than she was but I really did put a lot of pressure on her and what was if you are in that if you are a child and your parent is very hard on you what was that that you just told me that you would tell tell those kids um I would definitely say the best thing to do is to talk about it uh just kind of let them know how hard you're being on yourself because a lot of the time if you're anything like me that uh, pressure you're putting on yourself is going to be a purely mental thing. It's not something that you're talking to anyone about. So if they don't know that that pressure from yourself is there, they don't have any way to accordingly uh, gauge their own. Yeah, take a little... there's nothing wrong with encouragement and wanting your kids to do well in school and sports or whatever it is. But uh, just make sure they're not breaking under the weight of that, especially if they are adding any pressure of their own to themselves. Yeah. So have a conversation with your parents. I mean, communication is important in every kind of relationship. It's one of the most important things in any kind of relationship. So just talk to each other. Absolutely. All right. So uh, what is cool to 20-year-olds these days? What is cool? What's the cool thing now for you young whippersnappers? (laughs) Well, uh, I think it that's still a very person-to-person thing. There's so many things to be interested in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's um, different between our generations, too. Because How many different things there are to be interested in? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, even... So, back when I was in school, mm. it was still the same thing. And I, I, we didn't call them this, but I'll, I'll use 80 ter- 80s terms. You know, in the late 90s, early, early 2000s, there was still the jock kids. The preppy kids, the nerdy kids, the drama kids. You know, there were those certain groups. I mean, uh, there's always been people that just, they're good with everyone. And then certain people that are just completely solo and don't hang with anyone. But it was just like certain groups. And in your raising, it seemed like there was a lot more 
a wide acceptance of people. Although there is problem, there's still bullies, of course. Yeah, there's I think still there's definitely still clickiness to a degree. But maybe it's that there are more groups to be a part of, or just that generally everyone's more accepting of the ones that already exist. Yeah. Um, or just that there are subgroups within the groups now, and mm-hmm. it's just hard to keep up with, I guess, who to who to push away. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all, it's also like, it's, tell me if I'm saying this right. Like, it's cool to be smart. It's cool. Like, there are groups where, like, you're cool for being those things. You're cool for yeah. being different. Whereas, it used to not so much be that way. Yeah. I mean, I think there's definitely, um, there's definitely a lot more of that acceptance in, uh, more of an emphasis on like how that is a good thing yeah moving forward but there definitely is that clickiness still to a degree um and there are definitely still bullies and I think there's still some of that classic like dynamic of bully Mm -hmm. uh you know like the specific kind of kid that would get kind of picked on more yeah but um when you said that I actually did think that uh, what you I thought where you were going with that with what's cool nowadays to these young whippersnappers. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that maybe the comparison you were making was that so many more things are considered cool to be interested in now. Yeah, and that's um, kind of what I'm getting at too with the high And school. then I guess maybe back in the day it was more like like everyone was into a lot of the same thing. Like you could ask a kid back in the day what a kid their age is interested in and probably get a more definite answer. But now like. I feel like everyone's getting involved with it, everything, which yeah. is one of the beauties of the internet. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, speaking of the internet, you know, my generation and above, we love to talk about how you guys are so soft these days. Mm-hmm. What, <laughs> what percentage of social media do you think played that on y'all or put that on you guys? Oh, um... What percentage do I think social media gave us that label? Yeah. Or, no, what made you got... What do you think added to the... To just the amount of people that you see these days and at a younger age that are dealing with anxiety and depression and mm. all of those types of issues? Because that, that's also something that if we did deal with it back when, we weren't talking about it in that kind of way. Like, um, we weren't so open with having... Uh, that needing help mentally and emotionally I would definitely say that it is it's part of the cause I'd say that it's definitely there to some degree because I mean I've just seen people find uh reasons to convince themselves online I've I've definitely seen it used that way to kind of like give themselves another reason to like oh yeah that actually makes me anxious too yeah like that but I, was, I don't really like to dismiss anyone's issues. And I definitely don't think that's all of it. Oh, no, no. I'm not talking in terms of um, faking it. I'm talking oh, yeah, in terms yeah. of uh, do you think that people just sharing the absolute best side of their life, their best pictures, these filtered pictures, mm-hmm. this are giving more people depression and thinking that their life should be that way. But Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Which, I mean, that's, this is just a, I think one of the guiding principles of social media that I've picked up for myself Mm -hmm. um, over time is just that I can't take it too seriously. Yeah. Um, I, like, you kind of have to remove yourself from it a little bit even while you're using it in order to stay sane to some degree. Um... And that is something that, again, to some degree, you are responsible for. Yeah. Uh, you know, making sure you're actively paying attention to the fact that not everything on social media is real, regardless of how real they can make it look. That's just something you have to remember the whole time you're using it. But mm-hmm. does that mean that I think it's cool that there is such a large trend or a normalization or whatever you want to call it of, you know... Uh, marketing this lifestyle or these kind of like false lives to people at a young age who you know are going to have access to this. Whether you agree with younger children or younger teens having social media 
they're going to have it either way. That's just the way the world is at this point in time. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that I think it's okay to, knowing that, still market that to people um, and knowingly give off that persona online that may be damaging to younger audiences? No. But we do need to make sure we're mindful of what we're taking in and how it makes us feel, and we stop ourselves when we need to. So do you think someone like me, mm-hmm. that I'm right now building something, I'm building a brand, I'm building uh, just, yeah, just this personal brand, this business of Raven mm-hmm. in Real Life, do you think I have an obligation since I'm so often posting the really cool, I'm going out to eat with people, I'm going, you know, just doing all of these big events, doing this travel, do you think I have an obligation to also share when things are not as great? Um, or what's your feeling on that? Well, I think it that's kind of situational, I guess. I guess it depends on what the not so great is. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, if I think it's less about also sharing the bad parts which I do think that's a good practice I think it's nice to see when people do mention like hey my life isn't always perfect but even more than that I think it's better to just not be falsely advertising okay what is happening in the good moments okay um I mean live it up when you when the good moments are happening but that's just like the you know uh, the concept of an Instagram model who's had some plastic surgery done marketing a a weight loss tea and saying that that's how she got the results Uh, okay like that sort of thing that's or you know even not just in the as far as dietary culture but even financial things like talking about how easy it is and how you live off of sixty dollars a month in hawaii and everyone else could do it too if they really wanted to Mm -hmm. that's not obtainable for everyone you know um and it's kind of i think it's wrong to market it as such okay i definitely see what you're saying for example there's two things that i'm really into one the idea of van life and for those of you that don't know about that just go to youtube and put in hashtag van life hashtag mini van living uh things like that and you'll see people are buying mini vans and like mercedes sprinter vans the bigger ones that you could actually stand up in and they're decking them out putting beds in them toilets in them I'm, i've talked about this on the show before because i got a 2001 toyota sienna and it has a fridge in it a bucket toilet a bed a oh gosh a con- I can't remember the name of what it's called, but a little, I've got a little stove in there. I've got just different things so I could completely, if I wanted to, go off grid, travel all over, and you can stay in places like, um, a lot of people go to Planet, they get a Planet Fitness membership, and then you can go there, and you take your showers there. Sorry, my thing stopped recording. Uh, You can stay in different parking lots or uh, campgrounds. And basically, you can just travel all over and live this lifestyle. And on Instagram and YouTube, it does very much look luxurious. And some people only put, you know, you put the beautiful pictures out there. And you show how much fun and how you can eat so well on the road and just do all of this different stuff and save so much money. But then they don't show the times when you're living in your van and you have your messed up stomach or you you take that beautiful Instagram picture but you're being ed up by mosquitoes and there's no one out there with you and you're hot and you're sweaty but you're getting the really cool pictures but it's not really showing what that lifestyle is. So there are some people that come out with the truth because if you just watch the good stuff, you'll completely forget to prepare for the bad. And then the second thing is I'm very much, one of these days, I want to be paid to speak on a stage somewhere and share the message of how I've done the things that I've done and just, you know, how I've kept a positive attitude through everything that I've struggled with, those types of things. But, um, so I listen to a lot of self-help and personal development people. Um, And so when they were really pushing the idea of what's called hustle culture um they were totally for it and now people are speaking against 
hustle culture, but these are people that have already made it. And so now they're trying to flip the message of how you can make it really big in any industry and in anything that you do. But it took that hard work and all of that time for all of them to make it. So they're teaching something that they didn't actually practice. So you always need to look at every angle of what you're really believing in and getting yourself into because just because somebody can say it and make it sound good doesn't mean that it really makes your life good. Yeah, I just think in general, um, the internet, the World Wide Web is just such an easy place to not be genuine. They make it mm-hmm. incredibly easy for you to paint whatever picture that you'd like. Um, I think there's no reason that we shouldn't actively be trying to make sure we are painting a, a more real picture. Yeah. We all like to show the good parts of our lives, and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, with the audiences that we can reach with social media and how like I said how easy it is to be dishonest about exactly how things go I think it's just important to uh, have that drive to be more genuine when yeah. we can yeah absolutely I mean truthfully people should be more genuine even in their personal relationships <laughs> too yeah, these days for sure oh man and I, I do think some of that disconnect and I think some there is something to be said about the argument that, you know, younger generations with the internet do have a, a harder time with those genuine face-to-face connections at times mm-hmm. um, because of that, because of the internet, uh, or even just, you know, a little bit of insensitivity, uh, or I guess the better word would really be um, a bit of desensitization to to things that are going on in the real world or in relationships i mean we talk about being desensitized to gory movies and stuff like that on the screens but it you can also be desensitized to a positive uh connection with someone that can be something that you don't value as much as you really should um so i do think there's something to be said about that that i don't think that's completely wrong about younger generations i think it's something that we just have to work harder on not something that we're incapable of but in the world that we live in, in our uh, current day and time, with the internet, I think it's just something we have to work a little harder for and make sure we're aware of. Yeah. Um, I was, I don't even know what I was watching. I think I was scrolling TikTok maybe, and I saw this clip where this woman was saying something, and I don't even know why I'm bringing this up because I don't know the whole story, (laughs) but she was saying something about if before you go to bed, you lay in bed and you just binge watch a couple of episodes of Law and Order. What is it about you that makes murder and just horrible, tragic, traumatic things relaxing? And maybe you should <laughs> reflect on that. Well, you guys, I love watching true crime and I could play there and watch true crime videos until I fall asleep. So I think. What does that say about you? What does this say about me? I think. We're decent. We are desensitized yeah, for absolutely. sure, for sure, in every kind of way. But I mean, we have a few minutes left on this this radio show and podcast. So mm-hmm. why don't we take it to a lighter side for a few minutes? Okay. Okay. Um, what do you do for fun, Kara? What or what do you think about good old fashioned family fun? People aren't having enough of that these days, are they? Look. I know you weren't asking me to get into this on the radio show with you, but I'm going to get into it. I think that I have always been the family member that is the most enthusiastic about continuing board game night, uh, (laughs) finishing the game of Monopoly. We're not leaving it out overnight. You know we're going to put it up in the morning. You know, I've always been that girl, and no one (laughs) likes to admit that. No one likes to admit that they don't actually like board game night that much, but I love board game night. I'm all for some good old... Fun family night. Well, and I'm so proud of myself because the idea to come here and do this puzzle. And let me just give a shout out to my boss, Bill Evans, my boss at NBC 38 in Columbus, the owner of Dining for Charities. If y'all don't know about Dining for Charities, make sure you go to DiningForCharitiesGA.com and see about helping some local charities. But he brought in a puzzle. We're doing this thing called Sales Wars. So for Sales Wars, he brought in a 2,000-piece Star Wars puzzle. And this was 
four weeks ago. And it's been sitting in this conference room. Yeah. And it was, we had like not even all of the edge pieces together. You know, that's the first thing you have to do. So me and Kara up here doing it. I thought this would be fun. And she just, I didn't even think she was really going to want to do it. And as soon as I said, you have to not do this. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is real life. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I didn't think she, and she jumped on it. I'm pretty sure I said in my advice, and if I didn't say this, I, I must say it now, um, that if I could talk to my younger self, it would be play more of these games with your child because I didn't love it. So I would more sit back and watch them play board games and just regular games. At some point I would get involved too and play every once in a while. But if I could go back, man, I would have played all of the, all of the household games. I really do think that card and board games are severely underrated. I don't care. If you play, if you have a family game night once a month, it's not enough. I feel like it should be a daily activity for everyone. <laughs> I feel like everyone would feel a little better if you played one round of Monopoly Deal every night with your friend or your loved one. So That would you know, make the world a better place. Play Spider Solitaire if you don't have anyone with you. Shut the box. Whatever you whatever you got to do, do it. It will make you a happier person. I guarantee it. I do think you're right because I didn't do it for so long, and now I crave that type of time. It's so good. You don't know what you got till it's gone, you guys. Yeah. You just don't know what you got till it's gone. Um, what are some other things that families can do to really bring the fun and start spending more time together? Well, I think... Uh, Movies are a a good, relaxed way to spend time together, but it's the same concept of how movies aren't the best first date. Um, You don't get to talk to each other and really interact as much as you would like to. Unless, of course, you like narrating movies and talking during them. Not that anyone I know would do that. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I think uh, getting outdoorsy can be fun. I mean, sports or modified sports to fit the size of your family can be fun, too. Um... Little adventures. Uh, I'm not a super outdoorsy person. I'm not necessarily the one to want to go hiking or camping or anything. But adventures don't have to actually be into the great green, into the outdoors in that way. Uh, Window shopping. Just whatever you can do. Just quality time. Yeah. Um, just, Just being together and having fun with it. Spend some time with the people that you love. So, okay, let's challenge everyone. What are we going to challenge the listeners to do? This week, um, one, I think I think we should challenge everyone to one, buy, make, take an old deck of cards and learn a new type of game, card or board game. Okay. And then two, find someone you love and play it with them. Okay, that's your challenge this week, you guys. So, go buy or. Create your own card or board game and do it with some people that you love. We So we have to do this too. Okay. I'll be reporting back to you guys on a future podcast. Kara, do you have any last words before we hit this button? Um. Well, one, thank you for having me. Thanks. I enjoyed it. I hope to, to be on some Raven in Real Lives in the future. <laughs> um... I had a good time. I always enjoyed just sitting and talking with you about stuff like this. So I'm glad everyone can hear hear a little bit of our genius going on. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, to everyone who does listen to this, um, I hope you have a great day. If you see me, tell me happy birthday. <laughs> and uh, one love and peace and light. Love you guys. <laughs> All right, y'all. Till next time, this was a Raven in Real Life radio show and podcast.